everyone, and welcome back to another episode of your OGR, as today is game 75, as the Edmonton Oilers went up against the Nashville Predators and walked away with a massive afford and nothing of victory, as, uh, wow, what a game this was. Uh, first of all, it was kind of a snooze fest, to say the least, um, I will be saying that. Uh, but there was some entertaining parts of this game, but Nashville really, you know, they played a very defensive game, but also did the Edmonton Oilers. We were actually able to score a few goals, even though the Nashville Predators, of course, are a very shut down defensive team. We were actually able to do way better than what the Predators were able to do in that shutdown game, as Mike Smith got his first shot of the, uh, of the year, which to note, Mike Smith played absolutely magnificent in this game. We really do got to give him a big old shout out, getting his 43rd shout out of uh, his career. He just looked amazing. He he had a massive night for the Edmonton Oilers and I think was the second star of the night, uh, which he almost deserved the first star, but Leon Dreisaitl scored a Hattie. So there's tons of stuff to talk about. Before we do though, I'd like to just say, if you are new to the channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. So uh, Woodcroft went with a little bit of a different combination here with the Edmonton Oilers. We went with 11 and 7. So Chris Russell got himself submitted into the lineup while Devin Shore got, or Derek Broussard got taken out of the lineup. That was who was missing out of the lineup. So Broussard was not in the lineup while Chris Russell stepped in and Russell made a big difference. He played very well defensively. Not just that, he laid a fucking massive hit. Like, my lord, rocked Johansson. Um, even though it did generate an offensive uh, play for uh, the Preds, it was a massive type of playoff hit that you'd kind of like to see. But at the exact same time, you don't because he totally took himself out of the play uh, and allowed a really good opportunity for uh, the Predators. So Chris Russell has to, you know, watch himself a little bit, but still really cool hit to see. I mean, that was right in the trolley tracks, absolutely rocked him. But this game was probably one of the best defensive games we have seen out of the Edmonton Oilers. Every defensive pairing looked really good. And I liked how they kind of like mixed it up between Russell and Barry or Kulak and Barry or Kulak and Russell. You kind of seen a different combination between everybody. And honestly, like whether it was Kulak and Barry played very well defensively or whether it was Kulak and Russell, which I really liked that as well, or Russell and Barry. Uh, I mean, you just seen a lot of combinations. They didn't get a whole whack ton of minutes. Like Barry got most of his minutes from being on the power play, but he got about 10 minutes on five on five. Same with Russell, same with Kuyak. He had the most minutes with 12, Russell with 1130. Um, but most of them played about 10 minutes of ice time, five on five wise. Well, you know, Bouchard and Keith got the bulk of the time. Same with CC and Russ or uh, uh, CC and Nurse. So we're going to be getting into that a little bit later on, but I really like the way that we played defensively. And I think that's a big note to take away from this game. Now, yes, we were facing against the Preds, which aren't an offensively dominant team, but when you're able to shut down both Forsberg and Duchesne, two of their, you know, most offensively potent players, I got to say that's pretty impressive. So let's get into the goal scoring summary of this game. Uh, the very first goal was scored by Leon Drysaddle with a beautiful setup pass by Nuge. It was just tic tac toe between McDavid, Nuge, and then setting up Drysaddle for an absolute bullet as he sent that past Soros to get his 52nd goal of the season. Uh, and then heading into the second period, Leon Drysaddle got his 53rd goal of the season, getting his second goal of the night. It was an absolute bullet once again, and this was a Beautiful pass by Zach Kyman. I mean, I was like, my jaw was on the ground when I was doing play-by-play -play for this game because the pass by Hyman was magnificent. Right up, just straight up to Leon Drysdale, setting him up for a beautiful pass. And Drysdale threw it right on the back of the net for his 53rd goal of the season for the Edmonton Oilers, putting the Oilers up 2 to nothing over the Preds. And then Donnell Nurse got his ninth goal of the season. Uh, this was a really dumb, you know, not dumb penalty by McDavid, but honestly a penalty that, uh, you know, of course, yeah, it deserved. McDavid deserved a penalty. But my god, this whole game was a bunch of clutching and grabbing. It was definitely like some playoff hockey uh, in this type of game where the Nashville Predators were clutching and grabbing everybody. Not a lot of calls throughout the entire night. I mean, if you look at the power play, I mean, four power plays for the Oilers, three power plays for the Preds. But honestly, the Preds deserved a lot more penalties than what they got because the amount of clutching and grabbing they were doing throughout the entire night was absolutely insane. And the amount of missed calls, which frustrated McDavid in the end of things and ended up taking a penalty where he absolutely just 
battered uh, Matt Benning in the face with a little bit of a throwback hit. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it, it still generated us an offensive opportunity with Nurse getting his ninth goal of the season on a shorthanded opportunity. Um, and then Leon Drysaddle, that hot bitch dry baby, gets a hattie tonight uh, as uh, he threw up his 54th goal of the season on the power play and um, scored a big one for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, scoring a hattie. Uh, and it was another magnificent goal, another bomb from Drysaddle, sniped a right past UC Saros by a nice setup pass. By McDavid, who got two points on the night. And it was a really nice goal by Drysaddle, honestly. And then we're up 4 0 uh, in the game where, honestly, we played very well from top to bottom, from start to finish. We played very well. You know, there was a lot of times where we were generating a whole lot of opportunities, but we were shutting down the press. You know, we didn't give them a whole lot of leeway, like, especially in the third period from, you know, the span of, you know, probably the, the Preds had a really good start off. And then once, you know, we had that, you know, that really good start off for the Preds, we shut them down. Like, we did not let them get any opportunities from, like, probably the first two minutes into the first, um, from the first two minutes in all the way, or actually... The first two minutes, we gave up a lot of opportunities, but after that, all the way until, like, the last five minutes of the game, we were just shut down. We did not let them get any opportunities. We're mostly playing either in the offensive zone, and even if we were playing on the defensive zone, we didn't let them, you know, get a whole lot of chances. And whenever they did get a big chance, Mike Smith made some big saves. Now, of course, there was some bad defensive plays by, you know, Nurse... Uh, you know, Nurse didn't play magnificent, but he was one of our better defensemen throughout the night. Bouchard also had a really good night. Uh, Barry and Kulak were, man, they didn't generate a whole lot of offensive opportunities. They were mostly seen playing defensively throughout the night. Barry did help, you know, uh, keep the puck in the zone for the very first power play goal, which I do give him tips for that. But I don't have a whole lot to complain about Barry because, I mean, he didn't make any big mistakes, you know. He was playing all right defensively. He didn't make massive mistakes. He just played all right throughout the entire night. Um, big players to talk about. I really love the McDavid, Pulley, RV Kane line. But Kane, he's been not doing anything as much out of these past recent games. Uh, the past five games, he's only had two assists. And he has just been absolutely dry. And he hasn't scored since April 1st against the St. Louis Blues. So we need to see something a little bit about a Kane. He was hot to start off. And now he's been looking really dry and hasn't been able to produce a major amount here for the Edmonton Oilers. So that's something to talk about too. He's been on a little bit of a dry spell out of the lake for the Edmonton Oilers. But otherwise... He played really good as well, uh, you know, but Pulley, Arvey, and McDavid are just two highlights on that line. Dry Settle also had a really good night. Uh, Ryan Fogel, Cassie, and all those guys had a really good night. Nuge was kind of all right throughout the night. He was kind of like, there was always a predator all over him. Like, there was always a guy on him making sure Nuge didn't generate any plays. McLeod had a few opportunities, but he didn't look amazing either throughout the night. And same with Yamamoto, he just really wasn't out there very much. Uh, Hyman did generate a really nice pass, but he was all right throughout the night as well. And that's why I'm just kind of talking about individual players because we had 11 forwards, so there was a, a lot of lineup combinations. Of course, you've seen, of course, your main line came and David Pugliarvi played throughout the majority of the night. Same with Hyman, Drysdale, Yamamoto. Fogel, Ryan, and Nuge, they didn't do a whole lot throughout the night. They had a bit of a quiet night, but they played really well defensively. Same with Dry's line. I do give them that. They played really well defensively, but they didn't generate a whole lot of offensive opportunities throughout the night. Defensively, Nurse and CeCe uh, played pretty well defensively, but the biggest thing is they played really well offensively. Keith and Bouchard, I gotta say, they were also playing really well defensively. And then, like, whether it was Russell, Barry, Kulak, they played very well defensively throughout the entire night. I gotta say, they were probably one of our, you know, really good top six defensive pairings where they were thrown out there. They played really well defensively. They didn't have too many offensive opportunities, and I think that's mostly because they didn't have a lot of offensive draws here. I could take a look at that, yeah. So Kulak only had four. Uh, he had more neutral zone and defensive zone uh, face-offs. Same with Russell. He had about the same four offensive zone starts, three defensive zone starts, and two neutral zone starts, where compared to Evan Bouchard, uh, two... Actually, he only had one, but besides that, they didn't have too many offensive zone starts uh, between Kulak. Uh, Barry had seven, so that, that's a big thing. And, and that's a big stat you're looking at, right? Like, you're seeing with Nurse, like, Nurse and CeCe are getting more of the neutral zone slash defensive zone starts. Barry's getting more of the offensive zone starts, and while Kulak and Russell's kind of getting the in-between, you know, they're getting more of the 
the mixture of both, right? They're getting some offensive zone starts, but they're also getting the kind of the defensive and neutral zone starts as well. So it's a good combination. Uh, and Mike Smith played absolutely magnificent for the Edmonton Oilers last night. He was just all over the place. So we're getting down to the final seven games of the season here, ladies and gentlemen. We have the Vegas Golden Knights tomorrow, so that should be an amazing game. But we're getting down to the final few games of the season. So this is where your kind of tune-up games are as you get prepared for the playoffs. And honestly, the 11 and 7 combo works really well if our forwards are ready to go because honestly, the 11 and 7 combo might be our best bet going into the playoffs just because of the fact that we're kind of weak defensively. So if somebody's having a bad night, you know, you have that extra defenseman that can take a bit more minutes and, you know, relax Duncan Keith, who has been still looking like shit. He looks like shit. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, uh, I think that's just about it, guys, uh, as we get into our final stretch here of games before playoff hockey begins. Uh, so I'm going to end the OGR here. Thank you very much for watching, boys, and I'll see you guys all later. Adios, amigos.